Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my pile of stuff. So today I wanted to talk to you about how to go about moving home sustainably. I've gotten this question so many times since I've announced that we're moving on Instagram and here on YouTube and everyone's like, oh my gosh, how do I go about moving eco-friendly? And so I've been thinking about it for a while and I've thought of some tips for you. First, I wanna talk about donating. So actually, quick disclaimer, if I talk a little bit too fast for you, you can change the speed of the video using the gear icon right down here. So the first thing I want to talk about is decluttering and donating. First, donating just because it's going to be quick. So donating to a thrift store is not always the best option. And that's because thrift stores get overrun really, really quickly. Thrift stores might even have to end up throwing your stuff in the landfill. The best thing to do is yes, you can still get rid of stuff for free, but find a good home for it instead of just dumping it in someone else's property, pretty much is what taking it the thrift store is. Now I'm not saying thrift stores are bad by any means. Thrift stores are great for people who can't afford new things. They're great to build a circular economy, but sometimes they're not always the best option. So what I recommend is finding a no buy group in your area. It might not be titled no buy group. Mine is called like a swap group where people can trade. You could look for trading groups, bartering groups. There's also an app called Buns you can use to trade, or you can just simply give stuff away for free. Ask your neighbors, ask your friends, ask people on in your neighborhood. I'm also a part of a neighborhood page. I'll post free stuff on there. And this way people are actually gonna take stuff they want instead of the thrift store having to determine, okay, what can I take to sell and what do I have to throw away? Then you don't really risk stuff being thrown away. So that's a much better option. Of course, Facebook Marketplace is also great for selling things because some things are a little more valuable. You might not wanna give them away for free. What have I sold recently? I sold like a pretty much brand new blender bottle. I sold a Starbucks mug, like a few odds and ends here that I could make five, 10, 20 bucks off of, but then you sell a few things and all of a sudden you have a hundred bucks and none of your stuff went to landfill and it went to a good home. So again, you can buy, you can sell stuff on Facebook Marketplace, on eBay, for clothing, Poshmark, Depop, ThreadUp. There are so many options for you to sell stuff to help create a circular economy, keep that stuff out of landfill, and then you get some money in return. So the way it goes for me is, and again, this is just personal preference, but the way that I like to do it is I like to determine what can I sell and what can I give away for free on Facebook. Facebook is always my go-to just because it's people in my local area. It doesn't require shipping and stuff like that. I guess I could sell in other means, but I really just, I don't want to pay for extra shipping when it comes to like sending stuff overseas because I live on a really small island right now. So for me, Facebook sell slash free, and usually I can get away with selling or giving away almost anything for free. But whatever doesn't go for free on Facebook, I'll bag up and I'll take it to the thrift store. So thrift store is kind of like my last resort, of course, other than the landfill, but that's the way I do it when I'm decluttering. So now some tips for decluttering. There are a few ways to go about it. My personal favorite is to do it little by little by little. So for example, yesterday I focused on the cabinet that my microwave sits on. I focused on one drawer and one shelf. That was it. Instead of thinking, I need to declutter my entire house, that's very overwhelming. You're not gonna wanna do it. Maybe you do, but my personal preference is to do it little by little. And then the next day I focus on my craft closet. The next day I focus on like four more drawers in the kitchen. The next day I'll focus on my clothes and so forth. You just give yourself one goal per day instead of saying, I need to declutter my entire house. I think having those small goals like that much more attainable and it makes decluttering not seem so daunting. I have a video, I'll leave it linked up here where I decluttered every single day for 45 days straight. And that's kind of what I'm doing again with this. I'm decluttering every day for about a month or so. But in that video, I really break down about how it's not about trying to focus on your whole house, but focus on one item per day, one drawer per day, one room per day, whatever you can do. So there is kind of this in-between step between decluttering and giving stuff away. And that is determining what you wanna keep and what you wanna give away. For me, all that stuff that you saw in the beginning, that's the stuff from our entire house that we wanna keep. I'll show you the pile real quick of stuff that we're trying to give away. And then even then, you look at your stuff that you wanna give away and you gotta think, what can I sell? What can I um, give away for free? What should I take to the thrift store? That's how I do it at least. And then from there, obviously there's gonna be things that, that you can't sell or give away for free because it's just kind of junk. It might be broken, it might be gross, whatever it may be. Then you have to look at those items and, and think, okay, what can I upcycle? What can I recycle? And then what can I throw away? That's my personal method all the way down to the landfill. Landfills always last. I know this happens because I see stuff out on our curb all the time when we're walking our dog is that people just declutter, 
throw it away. With so many things, we've gotten things like furniture, board games, coffee mugs, cutting boards. This was on the side of the road. My plant stand was the side of the road. That table was on the side of the road. I talked about that in my eco home tour. I'll leave that linked above and below. And it just really is so sad. I it's I have like six steps to go through before I determine something is good for the landfill. That's what I encourage you to do too. Okay, now that we're pretty much done with the first step of moving, which is decluttering and determining what you wanna take with you. Next is packing. As you can see right here, a lot of my stuff is not in boxes. And that's because we're moving with the military. The military, moving companies actually wanna pack for us. So that way, if anything breaks, they can actually be held liable instead of us like packing things really poorly and making stuff break on purpose and then telling the government to buy a bunch of stuff for us. This way they can just pack everything according to their best ability. Nothing should break, hopefully. We'll see. But so I don't have too much advice on packing from this round, but I have moved homes several times before growing up. And so there's a few things. First, let me show you a few examples. This is an upcycled mailer. Underneath that is a shoe box. There's another shoe box. This was a box that I got a mug in. This was a box I got some soap in. So the tip here, Oh my gosh, I'm totally in my pajamas and you can see that. So the tip here is to use what you have. Don't go out and buy a bunch of totes and a bunch of boxes when you probably already have a bunch around your home. And even then all of the totes are like secondhand from our parents or that we got at garage sales back in Ohio or found on the side of the road here is to put stuff that could be damaged from water in like plastic totes that will be a little more protected. So things like important documents, electronics and so forth. And then things in cardboard will be stuff that if it gets wet, it doesn't really matter like dishes. If it gets a little rain on it is not gonna be ruined. And then next, something very important to do with packing is to pack so things don't break. <laughs> and of course, carry your boxes nicely, right? Fragile, right? This side up, you know, important messages for the movers or even yourself. Cause you know, you might forget what you put in each box. One of my favorite tips for moving is to maximize like space and stuff. So of course I, I have a bunch of like upcycled newspapers and brown paper I used to pack, but also like layering a, a plate, a shirt, a plate, a shirt, and then you get multiple stuff in one box and then your plates stay protected as well. And obviously this is important to protect your stuff so you don't have to buy more stuff and this stuff doesn't end up in the landfill. I guess you also wanna pack as efficiently as possible, especially if you're traveling long distances. You wanna kind of Tetris stuff in your boxes so you're using as little space as possible. Cause yeah, you could use like 47 gigantic boxes or maybe you could just use 20 if you pack a little more compactly, meaning that there's more room on the truck or the plane or whatever you're using to move. and they can haul, haul more stuff and make that trip more efficient. Which brings me to my next point of choosing a moving company or moving method. And honestly, this depends on a few things. This depends on how far are you moving? Are you capable of doing it yourself? Are you moving across oceans? And can you afford a moving company? There's like a lot of factors that go into it. So whenever we moved, when I was growing up, it was always like a do it yourself move. We would just load up the minivan. We never moved that far. We only moved like 10, 20 miles. So we would just load up the minivan and make a few trips. So if you're doing a move like that, you're just moving to the next town, maybe across town or something. That's pretty easy to just pack it up and do it yourself. Though I would suggest probably using the biggest car possible. Maybe a friend has a van, maybe you rent a truck for the day, just so you use as few trips as possible. Cause say you drive, I don't know, a mini Cooper, a really, really tiny car. You're gonna have to take so many trips. And that's kind of, it depends on what you think because yes, the mini Cooper gets better gas mileage, but you're gonna have to drive that way more than you would need to drive like a box truck, which will only take a few trips. And of course there are also like cross country road trips. I know people like in the US will just rent a U haul and they'll drive themselves and their stuff all the way across the country. And then there's U-Haul drop off spots pretty much in every city, even smaller towns too. So that's always an option. And so if you're packing yourself, you're loading up the vehicle yourself, always put like breakable heavy stuff on the bottom and then stuff like clothing blankets on top. Cause if that stuff falls off, it's not going to break. If a box of plates way up here falls off, it's going to shatter. So pretty much moving sustainably is all about making sure things don't break and trying to use the least fuel as possible. So what if you're not moving locally? What if you're moving overseas? or something. Well, good thing I have some experience with that, at least this this time. When we moved out here, we had like just a few boxes. This was our first home, so we didn't really have much. This is like our first real move with furniture and everything. And thankfully the military pays for the move since, you know, they're the ones forcing us to move. So there are a few things you can do when you're moving overseas. I know my friend Coco just moved overseas. From what I gathered, Coco, please correct me if I'm wrong, is that she just sold everything and now she's refurnishing her home at her new place secondhand. So that's always an option too. If you're moving 
long distances, it might just be best to get rid of everything that's not absolutely necessary to you and then buy secondhand when you get to your new destination. For us though, we're gonna have two different shipments. Our first shipment is called household goods. It's gonna be all of our stuff like our couch, our bed, pretty much everything that you see back here, like all of the stuff that we can live a few months without. And that's gonna go on a boat and that's gonna go across the Pacific and then probably on a truck and meet us in Vegas. So that's always an option if you're moving overseas, you can choose an actual ship to ship stuff on. It's gonna be a lot slower, so we're gonna have to be waiting on all of this stuff for three or four months. Even though it's not our choice, I'm still okay with it because it's very eco-friendly. Ships are a lot more eco-friendly than planes. And the other shipment we have is called unaccompanied baggage, which is gonna be things like our blender, our dishes, our desktop computer, and things like that. That stuff is gonna get to us quicker because it's going on a plane. While we do have a pretty big weight allowance for our unaccompanied baggage, we're trying not to put too much in there because it's gonna burn more emissions the heavier it is. So we're trying to put as much in household goods as possible because it's gonna be more eco-friendly. Even though we don't have a choice whether it goes on a boat or a plane, ultimately, we're still trying to do our best. So those are your options if you're moving overseas as well. You can choose a company that actually ships on a ship, a company that ships on a plane. If you're really desperate to get stuff, go for the plane. But if you're if you're not, you can wait a few months, go for the boat because it's most eco-friendly. Now, what about when it comes to moving you, yourself, your kids, your pets? Again, it all depends. <laughs> I wish I could give a straight answer for all of this, but it really depends on your life circumstance how quick you need to get there and so forth. Because we only have four travel days with the military, we're doing a combo of flying and driving. So thankfully we shaved off one of our flights to save some emissions there. And we're gonna drive the last leg, which is pretty cool that we even had that choice. If it was completely up to me, I would probably just take a cruise back to the US, be on a boat for a few weeks. Maybe not, it's typhoon season when we're moving. <laughs> Either way, if you have the option to take a boat, take a boat by all means. But if you need to get there quick, it's most convenient for you. Don't feel bad about taking a plane because moving is so stressful as it is. Don't be so stressed out with transporting yourself. Even if you're just going cross country, like in the US or whatever country you live in, if a plane is best for you, take a plane, but a road trip ultimately is gonna be more cost effective as well as better for the environment. Especially if you're already moving your stuff like the U-Haul situation, just drive you and your stuff and get it all done in one shot. Pretty easy, pretty low waste as well. Of course, moving is never gonna be completely low waste because you are gonna be throwing some stuff away. You are gonna be having to use a lot of transportation and transporting a lot of heavy things. So it's really important not to be too stressed out about, oh my gosh, I'm moving. How can I do this low waste? Especially if you're in the military like us, don't be so stressed out about it because ultimately we don't have a say of whether we fly, whether our stuff flies and so forth. We just gotta do what we gotta do and make it as eco-friendly as possible. But like I said, packing stuff so it doesn't break, packing stuff efficiently so you have as little boxes as possible. And if you have the choice, try not to fly. You can drive, take a boat, a train, whatever. But if you have to fly again, moving is so stressful. Don't put that extra stress on yourself by being worried about taking one flight. Ultimately, coming to, when it comes to moving in an eco-friendly way, it's not just what what is sustainable for the planet, but what is sustainable for you. If you're gonna be like anxious and nervous because you're trying to make this so eco-friendly that you're having no impact on the planet, that's not sustainable for you. So that's just something to keep in mind as well. You definitely want to, you know, keep yourself and your family in mind as well. Do what's easiest and best while still reducing your impact on the planet. It's not about perfection, it's just about doing what you can. So I think that's all the tips that I have for today. The key takeaways are clearly upcycle things you already have to transport your stuff, drive, boat, train if possible, but don't worry if you have to fly. If you do have to fly, try to take like as little flights as possible. What I mean is if you can get a direct flight from New York to LA, get that direct flight instead of going from like New York to Minneapolis to Dallas to LA, because the most fuel burned during a flight is during takeoff and landing. So if you can only take off and land one time. And also that will be shorter distance just going straight there. That's a lot more eco-friendly than taking like three or four flights. If you can, again, all of you can. All this stuff is dependent on your circumstances and life situations. And then don't forget to check out, I made a pretty good video a few months ago doing an office declutter. I'll leave it linked above and below about other ways to donate your stuff other than the thrift store. I go pretty in depth in that video. So I guess those are the, that's another key takeaway too. Avoid the landfill as much as possible. That's just like my mantra all the time anyway. See what you can sell, see what you can give away for free, see what you can donate, upcycle, recycle, and so forth before the landfill. I also have an entire recycling series if you wanna learn more about how to properly recycle things like plastics, metals, even electronics, I'll leave all of those videos linked down below. But I think that's pretty much it. If you're interested in my whole home declutter and pack, I will leave that video 
linked up here if I have any cards left. I don't think I do. That video will also be linked down below though. To learn more about how I personally decide what to sell, donate, give away, throw away, kind of how I pack this big monster of a pile back here and so forth. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this valuable, especially if you're one of those people asking a question like this. If I didn't hit your question, let me know down below what your question is. I can make a part two. I could just answer it in the comments. We'll see. But by the time you see this, we will probably be headed out the door of Okinawa and making our way to Vegas. That's probably, yeah, one of the last videos I'll be filming in this house, which is crazy to think about. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, I really appreciate your time. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe. I post new content every Thursday, Japan Standard Time, which is Wednesday in the US. We'll see how that content schedule goes when I move several time zones. But I post new content all along the lines of zero waste, focusing on practical sustainability, which is free, easy, and fun ways to live zero waste. And if you're into that, I would love to have you as part of this team. But until next time, remember that these small changes you make have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. Oh, you can see the mic. Oh, well, just um, ignore that. And so there is also kind of a step between decluttering and thrifting. Thrifting? I should have scripted this. The tip with packing here is my advice is to put stuff that might become, well, am I the person to talk to? Where am I going? Where am I going with this? What else are we putting in unaccompanied baggage? Talking about other ways to donate in the thrift store. <laughs> Don't include that. But I think that's pretty much, let's change. Let's, let's, let's go this way. OMG, the mic is still on. Can you tell I haven't worn a mic in a while?